people wanting to take a break during the summertime, um, like with in terms of their nutrition or especially like with tracking. I feel like people always get to the summertime and they're like, I want, I want to take a break from tracking food. I want to take a break from just, you know, worrying about my food in general. What's y'all's thought on that? It depends on what your goals are. And so if we want to have a conversation about this summer, like, hey, what, what, where do you see yourself being in the summer? If you see yourself like somewhat where you are right now and like you just want to cruise on through, then let's talk about what that goal is. And so if you want to take a break from tracking, I usually start with, okay, let's take one or two days off. And then you just tell me like, hey, do you, do you feel like you did over or under? And we'll also like monitor weight and photos and be like, great. So you're going to only track four or five days a week. And if we can do that and kind of kind of meet somewhere in the middle so that... And then do you feel like because you weren't tracking that day that you went off the rails? Did you? Did you not? Did, did you use that as like, well, I'm not tracking today so I can eat all the things. Okay, then we need to talk about that. Um, but if your goal is to like, yeah, I just want to maintain and I'm like happy about it. And I know that I have these parameters and I've built the systems in place. Like, you know what breakfast should look like at this point. Like if you are three months into coaching for the majority, I'd say the 80% of the people who are our clients, they should feel pretty good about like, I know how to make a breakfast, lunch, and dinner that's relatively in my goals because I have been practicing those skills. And so, yeah, if that's the case, then we can definitely do that. But if you have goals of like, I want my body comp to still be dialed at the end of summer, or I want to be gaining muscle at the end of summer, then we need to take a different approach. So it's really a, where, where are you willing to compromise fit? And so if you want to be dialed, then we can't really say that we are going to get to where we want to go with having loose goals. But if you're like, I just want to, you know, I maintain this, I'm feeling pretty good. I've already maintained it for a month or two in the last. And like, I want to get through summer and just, you know, maybe can I just not track on like, Saturdays and Mondays. I'm like, sure, we can figure that out. And then as long as we have these bare minimums that we've already talked about, like, you know, that on those days that you're getting your protein, that you're getting your water, that you're getting your steps and that you're sticking your exercise program. And that exercise program might look a little bit different this summer. You yeah, know, You might be out like, you might be on the boat, like wake surfing multiple days and it doesn't make sense to be hitting four days a week. Like where do we find that balance? Because you're going to be out hiking, supping, kayaking, like do it, enjoy enjoy it when it's nice and warm outside and the days are long. And so what does that look like, that balance look like? And so if we pull back on, okay, we're going to lift maybe two full body days a week or three full body days a week so that we have that space to do those activities and then work from there. And so it's really, I would say, goal-based more than anything. Um, How do you want to balance those things and where do you expect yourself to be? And then how do we build the plan to and the flexibility to be where you want to be at the end of summer? Yeah, I definitely think like what can you get away with, right? Like in terms of, you know, hey, how can I still get to where I want to get to or at least at least maintain? Like, I think, I feel like people don't really have this like concept of like, hey, I can maintain during the summertime. It doesn't have to, I don't have to like be dieting. I don't have to like gain a bunch of weight. I can just hang out where I'm hanging out. So what, what do I need to do to do that? And oftentimes, like, we don't need to do all the things that we were doing when we were trying to, like, diet and cut weight and all that kind of stuff. So what can we get away with? And yeah, it may look like adjusting how often you track. Like, maybe you don't need to track every single day or every single meal. You check in with yourself a few times. Or you don't have to train, like, five days a week if, you don't, if you're too busy. You can cut it down to, like, three and still get away with it. Like, figure out what you can, what, what's the minimum that you can do. I always go back to these minimums. If people can just conceptualize this, it's like your eating has to adjust to whatever your activity level is. Like they have to be hand in hand. And so if you're suddenly changing up your exercise routine, like maybe you are somebody that you lift four days a week, five days a week, or even you know, you're doing stuff up to five to six days a week. We, you know, when we make changes to how much we're exercising, well, then our food has to kind of adjust accordingly with it. I think that's something we get the question most often in Paragon is, hey, like I'm in a busy season of life. I can only work out 30 minutes a day or, hey, I can suddenly only work out, you know, three days a week. Am I going to, you know, lose progress or am I going to see less results or am I going to gain a bunch of weight or whatever it is? And it's like, well, your nutrition just has to go accordingly. So it's like my recommendation too is like maybe at least initially, like if you're 
if your end goal is, hey, I don't really want to track my food the next few months, well, do it every so often to like double check yourself or at least in that initial transition to, hey, I'm working out five days a week. Now I'm going to go live three days a week. Well, hey, maybe spend at least like the first week or two just kind of double checking yourself. Because again, it's like if we have ways to kind of monitor that and we're going off of oh, well, that's weird. Like the scale is going up or clothes are changing, you know, how they fit and stuff. It's like, if we can kind of monitor it again, it's like it, the the world is the oyster here, but we just have to be cognizant of is everything kind of adding up? And it's like, well, if you're suddenly, you know, way more active, same thing. You might have to eat more food than you've been eating, you know, during the year. You know, she does, like, she like, surfs, she does volleyball. Like summertime is when she actually increases her activity. And, you know, so we're dialing up food. And so that's something, again, like you may, you may actually need more. So like the self-monitoring is important. Like I, I tell people this all the time, like the main, one of the main, I think one of the main predictors of like long-term success is if you continue to monitor what's going on. Like you don't have to sit here and like weigh yourself every single day or whatever, or track your food every single day, but you got to check in with yourself occasionally and see, hey, where am I at, right? Like if you're halfway through the summertime and you haven't even looked at what's going on, like your food intake or, or what, what the scale is doing or what your clothes are like, like, and then you get to the end of summer, like, damn, how the fuck did I get here? Like, this stuff was happening the whole time. You had the opportunity to look at it. You just didn't look at it. So yeah. self-monitor. 